Presented by Sun's Rooms of Columbia. Spurs up. It's time for Inside the Gamecocks, the show with Phil Mullinax and J.C. Sherbert. So, how many of you would say you speak English fairly well, but with some difficulty? Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. You play to win the game. Now, let's take it away, J.C. and Phil. Welcome in, everybody. I had my mic muted while I was trying to greet everybody. How you doing? <laughs> Inside the Gamecocks, the show presented to you by Express Sunroom. Give them a call in Columbia, 803-446-4662. Always happy to have sponsor support. and hope you all support our sponsors as well. Been a busy couple of days going on around here in our world. And just remind everybody, big announcement tomorrow about the show and the state of things. I'm sure you will all be excited about it, as excited as we are. Absolutely. Good to see you, JC. Good. Like, was it a red? Oh, 24-7 sports meeting this morning. Yeah, yeah I look like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. A, like a small child with a beard and a crib. Look, <laughs> <laughs> Looking uh, good either way. 
I put it on today. I was talking about that movie Midsummer. Uh, yeah, the freaky Swedish one. Uh, and I remember, like at the end, they had like bodies and had like hats like this on. So I kind of freaked myself out. But then I realized that, that movie's messing with me, man. I mean, yeah, sometimes, and it's one of those where I woke up in the middle of the night and heard it going on, heard chanting and uh, <laughs> pagan rituals, and and, I, and then the soundtrack is probably it sounds like almost like a Hans Zimmer soundtrack. I mean, it's a really good soundtrack, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but I, but I, that that just kind of it was three in the morning. And I just I sat up and watched the end of it, and then. Man, so, so the little hat kind of got me today. Uh, but, yeah, I'm doing well. Got to go to the veterinarian today. I'm kind of done with my old veterinarian. Uh, mm. I've been using Banfield at PetSmart, and uh, I've been using them since I got red in Nashville. And the ones in Nashville were good. They were actual vet. These people up here, it's like we can't get anybody in for, for you know, 60 days. And I'm like, <laughs> what? What if he's sick? You know, and it's, I pay yeah. I pay these people seventy dollars a month. You know, because I I kind of just like to have it, so I don't have to have a one big bill at a time. And I was like, well, goodness gracious, uh, why? If I'm paying you seventy and he gets sick, I'm going to take him to the hospital anyway. So, is so we we were, veterinary service is that what that yeah, is at Banfield? Yeah, yeah, well, it's, right. like a, it's like a maintenance plan for your dog. You know? <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, you know, so I'm like, I'm gonna take him to the real vet. He's, he's about, he's, you know, 10, 11 years old now. So I figured, uh, it was time and they pissed me off for the last time. Cause I tried, called and tried to get an appointment. Uh, by the way, programming note, uh, speaking of the real, the human doctor, which yours truly has to go to, uh, they couldn't get me. You know, I told this lady, I'm calling to make an appointment, right? Cause I have to have a follow up and, um, Kind of the story is I'd gone and gotten a primary physician with my, my – because I have Obamacare, right, mm -hmm. uh, the affordable – so I pay out the butt for it. But when I moved up here, I went and got uh, a primary physician. I hated his guts. Uh, and then I never went back to the doctor. So when I got put in the hospital, they called this clown to come take care of me, right, uh, mm -hmm. as like the, the main doctor, you know, I had a, there was a neurologist and so the other people there, but this clown shows up and, uh, so they wrote me these blood pressure medications and I'm out and I can't, uh, no refill, you know, nothing like that. So I got to make an appointment. Mm -hmm. And so the lady, I guess they have an answering service and, and the lady's like, I told her, she's like, what time works for you? I was like, anytime except between 10 and 12 central Monday mm -hmm. through Friday. Well, how about 10 30 on Wednesday? No, ma'am. Um, no. You know, 10, about the third time, she was like, what about 11.15 on Thursday? I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't understand, like, why, how I'm not getting through to you here. I, I'm like, uh, I said three times, I, you know, I, she's like, sir, sir, calm down, sir. Uh, it was like that movie Anger Management with uh, Adam Sandler and Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I feel pretty, oh, so pretty. You know, but... Uh, and I was like, uh, I was finally was like, well, she's like, sir, calm down. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa we're not on an airplane here. We're not, well, this is not during COVID-19 and my mask slipped off because I'm, I had four extra beers before I got on the plane because you don't serve alcohol. And then that's what got me during COVID. I'm like, you know why people are like going crazy and hammer? It's not because of the mask on the plane. It's because they're drunker than you know what with a mask on the plane, right? <laughs> because you want because because what you do is you get loaded in the airport. You're, you're drinking extra. You're ordering them two at a time because you know this flight's gonna suck. Uh, you're not gonna be so, so. You're just getting just people were just getting completely wasted, and they didn't understand if they would just reasonably serve drinks and stuff like that. That you know instead of just cutting somebody off that's had way too much at the airport. Um, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, uh, Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Again, a big announcement tomorrow. We got the mid, the return of the mental edge. That's I'm going right. to ask Sawyer if he's ever uh, ever double-fisted a, a, a craft beer before getting on a plane. I, I think that answer would probably be no. I'm, I'm assuming it's a no, too. <laughs> Maybe not, though. Sawyer surprises me sometimes, you know. Yeah, you never know, man. You never uh, the, know. Maybe the Bear he does enjoy a nice poster. beverage, a nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, four or five before you get on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I plane. could drink that much going before I go, going on a flight, though. I don't know. 
Not five minutes before I walk no. home. Now, <laughs> oh, Lord, no. <laughs> me, me and the fiance, if we're going someplace, like, okay, so we're going to Disney in March, and uh, weird me, I don't drink at Disney because I, I don't want to get hung over and have to go the next day. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. That would be a nightmare. Uh, and then I don't want a hair of the dog it and be like the, the drunkest guy at Disney World either. So uh, we went we went oh, one time. It's hard the, to contend for that title, sir. It's hard to <laughs> contend for that title. <laughs> we, went, we went one time for the Food and Wine Festival, and it was like a, a, an accepted yes. drinking trip, right? Spent mm-hmm. most of time at Epcot. But so, so I'm not going to, you know, when we go there, but, but like if we're going to the beach, we intentionally get to the airport two hours early. It's belly up. <laughs> The yeah, kids man. were with us last time when we went to the beach in July, and it was just like, and we, we went through Nashville, and, in Na- and the Nashville airport, they, they have beer carts. They just sell sell the, you know, some, yeah, you know, it was, it was, an, but yeah, so that's that's how we roll it, and uh, quite frankly, I'm a lot less nervous flyer when, when that happens. When, when I used to fly for work with 24-7 and rivals and ESPN, I never, never had any alcohol before I got on a plane, and, you know, bad thoughts went through my head. Yeah, much like they did when business flight. <laughs> well, yeah, when this little hat when it popped up in the mirror today, I was like, "Ooh, Swedish horror film." <laughs> Na- <laughs> Nana's porch chat box. Craig says, "Yo." Trevor says, "Good morning." Jeff Fowler, what's up? Bruin Nation. Poor C Philly can't catch a break on Twitter. Talking about uh, our boy Chris Phillips. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, I guess. There's the Mark Ryan thing uh, has happened to him, but that's okay. I mean, like, look, here, here's the thing, guys. We have a lot of guests on this show. Uh, I don't monitor what they post. I, I you know, I, I enjoy Chris's. Uh, I, I, I read his tweets and um, I enjoy his Instagram account quite a bit. I think he's got you know good takes and is a talented guy. Not everybody is going to agree with everything. You know, no. they're there. I, I don't care if you're talking about him, David Cloninger, Brad Crawford, John Whittle, my mom, my dog, Red, <laughs> the veterinarian, my doctor. <laughs> you know, it, it, you're never going to bat a thousand. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to steer clear of any kind of like, you know, uh, ill feelings because, you know, he you know, he, he's. You know, talking to probably defending Mark Ryan from incessant Twitter harassment is my guess, which is fine because you know you make your bed, you lie in it, right? Uh, I've been incessantly. There, there's one particular Clemson account that's obsessed with me. He's keeping a spreadsheet of everything I say. That's psycho. Let's send him to the Swedish commune over there, right? That's a nice vacation for that guy. The midsummer. <laughs> That'd be good to get out of his mom's basement. Yeah. Put him in a stuffed bear, light the house on fire. Great. Super. Um, get him out of his mom's basement, you know. Um, you know, so, so I get it. But, uh, look, here's what got me about the, the whole thing Mark said. Is it was his whole premise. You know, first and foremost, uh, th- it's not true that – Shane Beamer went after Garrett Riley hard. I don't care who said what and when. Um, uh, Because, you know, you want to talk industry sources, quote unquote, where? Where are these people at? Because, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I know just about everybody that covers these coaching search, that own these coaching search sites and stuff like that. I mean, they're friends of mine. Nobody had heard anything about Garrett Riley. Uh, There were posters on the message board that were speculating about it. Uh, I think a couple of Carolina boosters assumed that would happen and we're talking, but uh, in hindsight and hindsight is 2020 and I don't, I don't brag about things I learned in hindsight because then I'd be never wrong. And I don't mind <laughs> wrong. Um, in hindsight, I think Dowell Loggins was the only serious candidate now, right or wrong. You could just dis- disagree, agree with that all you want. I mean, I, you know, I, I had some opinions about that at the time myself, but that was, that was kind of the deal. And if you think about it, the, one of the biggest focuses for Shane Beamer, because Carolina finished so good, was to get Spencer Rattler to come back. Do you think Spencer Rattler is going to come back and play for Lincoln Riley's brother in that offense? 
Yeah, be a no. tough call there. Yeah. And what I've always <laughs> said is there there is no tomorrow in college football. So you may say, well, JC, you should let him go because they had Garrett Riley. Well, yeah. What if Garrett Riley came, had a decent year, and left? And then you don't have the year with Spencer you could have had. And there is no tomorrow because you could lose half your roster tomorrow in college football. I mean, they're, look at what's happened to some of these other teams. Um, yeah, the so interesting that, side that, of that is, like, with the defense shaping up the way it is, looking to the next year, would you rather have Spencer and Juice back? <laughs> because maybe you're going to get into a few shootouts. <laughs> you have to outscore some folks. You're, you're right? going to have to outscore them, yeah. So, so that's number one, you know, and so that, that just was categorically not true. If you know anything about South Carolina, I could give a crap about what industry sources say. Uh, I have my quote unquote industry sources as well. And uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't have said anything about it if I'd heard that, you know, like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that was wrong at all. Well, the second part of it is this notion of well, what does it say about the tiers? The two programs are wrong. Well, I'm going to say this. Anybody who knows anything about coaching searches in college football and what coaches think and, and, and their opinions and stuff, any coach that does not have skin in the game, in other words, any coach that does not, you know, doesn't care about Clemson and Carolina, they're not from South Carolina, they don't have ties to either school, will tell you Clemson is the better job. I don't want this to offend anybody. I'm not talking about program or team. I'm talking about job, and those are all different things. You have SEC resources and you compete in the ACC. It's like Mike Morgan and I talk about all the time, the path of least resistance. <laughs> South Carolina is a more challenging job, but, you know, throughout history, I mean, you know, uh, Mike McGee interviewed Tommy Bowden for the, for the South Carolina job when he hired Holtz. And, you know, there was no way Tommy Bowden, Tommy Bowden could have taken a number of jobs. He took Clemson because you look at it and you're like, wow, I don't have to beat my head against the wall, you know, and have to like go on a two game losing streak and then turn around and play, oh, I don't know, Auburn <laughs> uh, or Tennessee or Arkansas or any of these teams. I can play Duke, you know, or, or I can play a struggling NC State or, or, or anybody, you know. Uh, whereas in the SEC, that's a different, different deal. And coaches like the path of least resistance in these days. They like to go to the playoff. And Clemson's success in the playoff speaks for itself and all that. So even if it was, for some reason, that Shane Beamer one night called up Garrett Riley and begged him to take the job, which would never have happened, um, the fact that he went to Clemson doesn't speak to anything, but Clemson is a better job, according to most coaches. Now, does that mean better team, better program, whatever? No, better job. Uh, because coaches want to go or they can win. Uh, you know, how hard is it going to be if Garrett Riley wants to be a head coach one day? How much – is it harder to light up the SEC at South Carolina or light up the ACC at Clemson most years? Hmm. See, you know, and, and look, I'm not saying that I would coach at Clemson because obviously I wouldn't. But uh, I, uh, I'm just saying that, you know, that whole point he was trying to make makes no logical sense. Uh, because at the very least, his last statement was a Captain Obvious statement, you know, uh, that, that, that was more meant to stir the pot and talk about how there's this huge gap between the two programs, which that gap is closing, obviously. Uh, obviously. Um, uh, and and tr try to kind of hammer that point home and spit in the face of Gamecock fans like he normally does. And... Uh, and it was not based on any kind of like intelligent, uh, you know, knowledge about how coaching jobs and coaching searches work. And his original statement was false. So that's my feeling on that. And, uh, you know, I, I, we'll, we'll let that lie and let that rest and, and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. But um, as far as people, yeah, because I got message board people going, hey, kick him off the show or whatever. No. <laughs> Chris has good segments here. He's fun. I, I appreciate different voices. You know, that's what the show is for. The, the message boards for one thing, the show is for something else, you know, and uh, plus that people seem to like it. And I've gotten to know some of you that were, you know, that, that listened to his show second hour and our show first. And, you know, it's, it's we've expanded a little bit. Joey says, how are we feeling about the announcement at 1205 today? I don't know. What do you think, Phil? 
who's that? Michael Michael W. Michael Smith. Smith. Yeah, Michael um, Smith. Yeah. Michael yeah. W. Smith. Michael W. And Smith. Friends, <laughs> friends are friends forever. Is that? <laughs> uh, Wasn't he? I thought he was a. Uh, thought Michael W. Smith was a Christian rock artist back in the day. He is. He sung that song. Years, I think yeah. friends for friends. Is that? Oh, friends are friends. Okay. Yeah. 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 If the Lord's the Lord of them. Yeah, who know. knows? I don't know. You can't get to. I'm looking at his Twitter, you know, right now. Who knows? Uh, you just, and I don't see anything like where he's posted. You know, come see me on Instagram live because that's what I was looking for is to see if we could join. Yeah, it in so progress, see how we could but, stream it. Yeah, I think. But I don't uh, see anything. I think Where's he awesome. out of Savannah? Savannah, yeah. Calvary mm -hmm. Christian. Speaking of Christian, Calvary Christian Day. Uh, mm -hmm. Savannah is a place that. Uh, they don't always put out a lot of players, but I, I think South Carolina, given the proximity, it makes sense for them to recruit. Uh, I guess the last guy they got out of, of Savannah was Chaz Sutton. Rekill Powers kind of counts. He was at, in Savannah playing at Benedictine, played his senior year in Atlanta. So I don't remember if Rico was from Savannah or Atlanta. Um, but you don't always get a bunch of players in Savannah. You get a lot of players that come out of Beaufort and Hilton Head on the other side of the border, and then you go on down the coast, and it gradually gets, you know, more full with players all the way down to Camden County towards Jacksonville. But uh, I think that absolutely – I mean, South Carolina's good at recruiting Jacksonville. I think the coast of Georgia is a good spot. You know, there's just it's just not as loaded as, say, uh, South Georgia traditional – uh, or even middle Georgia, or, or the rest of it. It's not as loaded as the rest of Georgia. Like the north part of Georgia, the northeast especially, mm -hmm. uh, and then the coast is, is probably, those are probably the two areas of that state that aren't as heavy. Uh, but, hey, this guy's got a heck of an offer list. Uh, he'll remind you, I think, a little bit of former Clemson tight end Dwayne Allen or maybe a little heavier version of Busta Anderson. Um, really good prospect, four-star guy. You take those, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, wherever you can get them, that's for sure. Yeah. So, so but there we there's go. There's no picking this, you know, there's no way to tell which way he's leaning right now. And his offer list is uh, pretty strong. Yeah. <laughs> pretty <laughs> pretty strong. strong. Uh, Lance says, uh, I got to ask, is the portal going to be nice to us again down the road? Maybe an edge or two. I, they're going to try to find some. I yeah. mean, and who knows who will get in the portal uh, after spring. But uh, that's the hope. Um, we'll see sort of what happens, though. Um, Jan says, JC, rolling in here like a gnome. <laughs> you that cartoon, David the Gnome? Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was fascinated by that as a kid. I, I don't know why. Just, you know. It scares you know, me whole a little, little bit. Subculture of, you know, things that live in the woods. Hierarchy and all of that. Yeah, I am David the Be Nerd, kind to animals and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a good hearted little thing. They got like a tiny Santa Claus. Mm hmm. With Maybe a that was pointy the draw. hat. I don't know. I don't know. I think we need to have like a never ending story David the Gnome mashup. Like a cross <laughs> universe like they do with Marvel. <laughs> the nothing. The nothing just comes and the wipes nothing comes to that planet. forest. <laughs> Throw the Smurfs in there. I don't know. Uh, ah. Jafaller said, "JC, you promised we would get the story on the failed firing of Frank Martin in 2020." I did. Um. Basically, uh, it was uh, well. It could have happened, in, honestly, in, in – uh, so you're, you're, we're talking here 2020, 20, 2021. It could have happened in 2020 because it was sort of a, hey, you need to get the NCAA tournament type of thing. That year, if you remember, that was the year Carolina had some really, really good wins and then some losses like that were like uh, – shoot, I think Stetson. That's the last year they lost to Stetson. Uh, they played a terrible Vanderbilt team at the end of the year, having to win to get kind of on that right side of the bubble to position themselves to where they wouldn't have to win the tournament in the SEC tournament to get uh, to get the tourney, and they they choked. Um, it could have happened then, but then you remember the whole world stopped, and nobody got fired except Danny Manning at Wake Forest. <laughs> uh, 
and then so uh, we uh, they went from there. Um, and uh, so then the next year, they were ready to do it, and the state government, state officials got involved and sort of over overrode the university, started throwing some threats around, um, and Frank got one more year. Now, I think after the, I think it would have been more justified after that year that they underachieved and lost to Stetson than the pandemic year. Uh, and then he put a good, not a great team, but a good team back together the next season. And, uh, so that's why politics shouldn't interfere uh, in uh, college sports and coaching searches because that's kind of uh, what happened there. And, and then it became an unfortunate thing where you had to fire a guy with a winning record because of some ultimatum. Um, mm. But that's kind of what happened. If we want more details, let, let me know. we got to get to a break because Sawyer's already in. I, for some reason, Phil, I thought he was 10, 1140, but uh, I guess we'll get him right in the middle this time. Uh, yeah, we'll be I back after 20. these messages. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's okay. We'll be back after these messages with the mental edge. Sawyer next coming up. Golfers and wannabe golfers, former Gamecock golfer Meredith Taylor is now a full-time golf instructor in the Midlands of South Carolina. In-person golf lessons are held at the Country Club of Lexington. Half hour, hour, on course nine or 18 holes. And if you're outside of South Carolina, Meredith conducts virtual lessons. Just send in your golf swing for analysis. Gift cards are available for in-person one-hour lessons. Connect on Twitter at Mayor Taylor and find her online at McKellarEnterprises.org. Her email is on the website. Schedule your next lesson today with Meredith Taylor, former Gamecock golfer. (laughs) Gamecock Nation, do you need a place to stay for the big game? Many hotel booking engines keep all the commissions, but at Fan Plans, you support inside the Gamecocks, still earn your hotel loyalty points, and you receive an email with direct confirmation from the hotel. Whether you are visiting Columbia to cheer on Carolina or hitting the road to follow the team, get in the stands with Fan Plans. Uh, This is Coach O. Now back to the show. Go Tigers. In the soul. Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show, everybody. The show is presented to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give John Barber a call, 803-446-4662, to set up a no-obligation consultation to talk about a potential backyard outdoor retreat for your home. We're joined now on the McKellar Enterprises guest line for the first time in the new year by our friend Sawyer Nix for our Mental Edge portion of the show this week. Sawyer, welcome back. Hopefully you had a happy new year and everybody's well. Uh, this week, everyone is doing better. We've had we've had the bug go through our house, perhaps hmm. uh, some flu with my daughter. Uh, my wife fractured her wrist. So we've, uh, oh, we've no. gone through some... Uh, some uh, trials and tribulations to start out the first of the, the year. So, um, so far, so good. I have a little rasp in my voice getting over some sinusy stuff. So, anyway, we will prevail and we're moving onward and upward, right? No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around. So, oh, other well, than sir, the broken wrist, that stinks. I hate to hear that. Yeah. My daughter, yeah, broke broken a couple years ago. It's awful. Mm. So, who knew that I'd uh, figure out how to. Uh, dry and straighten my wife's hair and do all those fun things, right? You know, <laughs> now, it, maybe it's good practice since I do have a 10 month old daughter. Or maybe it's just getting me prepped for those future years. So we'll see. It's probably a useful skill, <laughs> I would think. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it, especially if I were still single, I'd, I'd be like, hey, that's, pr- that's probably kind of a little pimp thing you could do at some point. You know, you're in the dating. Uh, the dating journey, and you, know, you say, "All right, well, hey, I'll just brush your hair, and, you know, all that." I don't know. That may work against you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that because uh, she could. She's she, she she can brush her own hair. So anyway, she's not here, by the way. Uh, she had to go to the office today. All right, Sawyer. So, so the transfer portal. I guess uh, some Gamecocks just elected to go, and then some Gamecocks elected to come. Um. Just from a uh, a decision making standpoint, when you're that age, if you had to give guys advice, taking the gamecock thing out of it, right, about making a decision like that for your future, yeah, you know, what would you tell them? Well, it's a 
you know, if you're really thinking about the future, there's, there's short term and there's long term. There's okay. You know, you have this plan and this idea where, where the steps in between what happens if you get injured, what happens if your coach leaves, what happens if you, know, you decide you're done with football? Cause um, I can't remember what Nick Kenyon that played tight end, that that was the issue. He was just done. So uh, get players to think about, you know, you're thinking one track and this is going to be your plan. And, and it may or may not happen that way, but where are the other steps? And so for players like Joyner, I mean, it's like if, if he gets injured, we've all said, or, or y'all have said, he's taken care of as a Gamecock in the state of South Carolina. Job will not be an issue. Um, obviously, he cooped a lot on his um, baby shower list uh, of things that he needed. I think he took a, a shot of uh, <laughs> the Amazon packages at his door. I mean, those are the things that, as a player, you take into account, you know, where the academic help that you're getting from the University of South Carolina versus transferring to, I don't know, Bubba State University. I'm just making up a school. But um, some other school that, okay, are they going to have that same level of support? Maybe you get a little more playing time or you're the starter. Or you go from South Carolina to California. I mean, just me, like, just – uh, culturally, that would be a shock to me, you know, that it, money aside, you know, are they willing to adapt to all those things? And, and some kids are like, no, I'm absolutely no big deal. I'll switch wherever I'll go to Alaska. I'll go to Montana. I'll go to, you know, it doesn't matter. So, but just getting the student athletes to think through multiple steps and not just one track mind, just consider other possibilities and not that they're, they're playing it wrong. Uh, but just say, all right, where are the other possibilities and, and where does that fit in your long-term goal? If if plan A doesn't work, how does plan B, C, D work at the other school versus staying on it at South Carolina? Yeah, I, I think that that's, a, you know, the decision-making uh, process there is interesting for young people these days. I actually I, I had a phone call this morning with someone who actually – advises high school recruits, you know, and, you know, talks about, um, you know, getting your grades right, making the right decision for you and all that. And it's kind of one of those things where uh, it's, it's become, you know, there's a lot of other factors. Um, and, and he kind of asked me, you know, what I thought about it. And I said, well, you know, you, you have to kind of be re more realistic, you know, recruiting, you know, kind of in the golden era, and I, I think we're past the golden era of college football recruiting. It was almost like prom, you know, almost like an entitlement. These kids will never go through yeah. this again in their lives. It's the time of their lives. Well, now there's so much more to it. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so I think we're past the golden era. And um, I used to kind of think that was unrealistic. I was like, you're, you're picking a college. There's a lot of work to be done. But, hey, it's your senior year. Rock and roll, man. More power to you. You want to have a big ceremony and cupcakes and things like that? When when you pick a school, great. You know? Uh, I didn't care for the people that threw the hats on the ground and stuff. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing uh, with that. But uh, I, I do – now I think it's, it's become much more complicated. And uh, we're past the time where I think you know, it's the golden era or whatever. Um so when you're that age, you know, and even in college, you know, I think so, some of that stuff's addictive. You know, some of that yeah. stuff with the attention is addictive. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think you crave it again because I'll tell you what right now, Phil, uh, I didn't have such a great senior prom. I didn't go. But junior prom was off the chain. If I were 22 and could go to junior prom again with all my buddies, I definitely would. We all want to relive high school, right? Uh, and so that's uh, to an extent, there. yeah. <laughs> that's the thing there. Um, you know, on the flip side of that, Spencer Rattler and Juice Wells are coming back. Um, just from a like interpersonal standpoint with their teammates, uh, you know, yep. obviously two very respected players. You know, how does that kind of motivate and, and inspire and uh, put confidence? Because one of the reasons I heard Jordan Burks left, and this is hearsay was that he said he thought that Wells and Rattler were gone and they weren't Carolina wasn't going to be a good next year, which I, I don't even, I don't know if that would have been the case or not, but, uh, but here they're back. So 
Uh, obviously, their decisions do affect other players in terms of, of, of their ideas about success next year. So, uh, you know, how, how do you think uh, two guys returning like that to sort of lead the team when they obviously had a lot of options, uh, you know, inspires the belief in where the program is going? Well, I think it, it says that they believe in the culture, which is what Beamer's trying to sell. Players going to come and go, and if new recruits are focused only on NIL, that's that's not going to be a – you're not going to be a good fit at, at South Carolina. And I think it kind of proves, yes, we want elite talent and we want elite players. But we want the best that we can get, but not at the expense of – a ransom culture like A and M or Miami, um, so not at not at that expense, and, and I think it shows the team that the players bought into that. That there's a trust level that they believe that what Coach Beamer and now Coach Loggins um, is going to do. There's a belief in a, in a vested interest is a word I'll use. That not only is it yeah they they have some belief, but they're they're putting their trust, you know, in, in the coaches and their teammates as well. Certainly their their teammates can benefit from them returning, but they had enough belief that there's, you know, that the other threads are tied together as well, that their team is not just, oh, well, everybody's gone. We don't care. Or if they come back, we care. If not, you know, they're, the culture is set where there's belief and there's a work ethic and there's a determination to succeed and, and move forward. I mean, I think that played a role in not only the commitment from coaches to invest in them as, as individuals, as student athletes, more beyond just the value that they can bring back as a, as a returning player. I think that's a big, um, I think that is a factor for them. And, and that encourages uh, team unity, which is what you need. You got to have, you know, 11 on 11. You can't have one guy having his way and, Ten guys having a pity party. I mean, you're everybody on the same page, working hard and, and working towards the same goals and, and being accountable. And I think that's the element that they will bring back is their competitive edge helps hold other players accountable. Um, and then also knowing that they're returning, they can't hide and duck. The coaches know them well. The players know what they can do. So they're held to a standard as well. Um, so I think it's it's both ways with accountability and, and trust. It is a big factor. Wrap it up with Sawyer next. The mental edge is back. Uh, Sawyer, how, how would you, if you were counseling somebody, how, how would you encourage them when they were the victim of something that's extremely unfair? Mm -hmm. how, how would you encourage them to handle it uh, and move forward? Well, that's a, that's a tough challenge. Um, I would say many, many of my clients I see on a daily basis, whether it's depression or anxiety or um, marital issues, you know, to, to some degree, they feel that there have been things that have been unfair. Um, so, so part of that, I think the first step is accept it. I think, you know, you, you can try and fight it and swim against it and argue it and things like that. But I think part of it is, Hey, this was an injustice, or you were hurt, or this is a tough situation. Acknowledge those and the emotions that go along with that. Sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's confusion, uh, sadness, frustration. There can be lots of different emotions that go along uh, at the same time. We can experience multiple emotions at the same time. We can be sad that we lost the job opportunity, but also angry because somebody lied on their resume that got the job. You know, we, can, we can have multiple emotions at the same time. But I think it's accepting that and then also going back to, you know, what can I do right now to, to make sure that my mindset's in the right place and, and how can I persevere and, and be resilient in this? And that's one of the big challenges I have for my clients is, is this is difficult. This is challenging. And so much of that you can't control. But what can you control or what can you focus on and how can we not get you stuck? You know, because there's some players that they can be stuck or, or individuals that can be stuck at where they're at. And I think uh, that's where players build character and build strengths and resilience is, is if they experience something that is unfair 
okay, you know, we're not saying that that's fair, that you didn't get treated um, fairly, but how can you, how can you learn from this? How can you grow from this? Because I'm sure, you know, JC, I know for example, is, is shared examples of media opportunities that were kind of, uh, miss, that he missed out on that were maybe perhaps not fair. And now he's on the other side. And I think that's kind of fueled his, fueled his fire that that's motivated him. Um, but that's also shaped him to be, have the high character that he has as well. Um, so I think that's, you know, going through the tough situations early in, um, in JC's career early on, I think is, is a factor in, in who he is today makes him tough when he needs to be tough but also leads him to be high character and, and helping others, which is part of, part of what he does. And so I think those opportunities that we experience that are unfair, they have an opportunity to shape us. And, and they just reveal what we know. They're simply tests. They reveal who we are and what we know and where we're going. And they're just opportunities. And I think if we view them as opportunities, even if we are mistreated or hurt, um, if we view them as opportunities to grow and to move forward, uh, we can be resilient and we can not only uh, get through those, but we can help others. And that's a, another important aspect that we can do is, is get through the other side. So you're next to Mental Edge, man. Thanks for joining us. We got to hit a break. Uh, so we're going to roll out. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow for a big announcement. It's going to be a big one. Uh, All right. And, uh, I, th I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it because uh, you'll be back here on Tuesday and uh, probably one more Tuesday, and then you'll get to, like, be immersed in the newness. So uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So, well, are you going to drop any hints for me? Because, I, you know, I, I'm like a kid on – I didn't – I don't know that I got enough for Christmas. So maybe maybe J.C. Claus delivers a little, little, little something. The, the, something. The hint is uh, that we'll be dropping it on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have to hold my breath then. <laughs> we will see. All right, my man. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Sawyer. Right. Sawyer yeah. next with the mental edge. And uh, we'll hit a break. We'll be back. Uh, interesting things in the chat box. Uh, and also, uh, kind of looking at this Alabama NIL thing, and I'm kind of wondering how they're able to do this and Park Avenue at Carolina wasn't, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see sort of what happens. Um, or I need to read more into it. All right, we'll be back. The show rolls on. Hey, man, are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes, he takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah, same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues. And I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. You know what, Phil? Let's ask Stone Blanton. Hey, JC and Phil, if you want a solution to your IT problems, give Heritage Digital a call. Our boy Matt Odom has a low cost, one price solution that will get you running right. Call 843-699-1001 or heritagedigital.com and ask for Matt. He will hook you up today and tell them Stone sent you. If you're looking to sell or buy multifamily property right here in South Carolina, the Burgesson team of Remax at the Lake can help you get to closing fast and easy. Adam and Derek Burgesson both are very proud Gamecocks and are more than happy to assist you with any of your commercial real estate needs all across the state. You can email Adam at aburgesson at remax.net. That's A-B-E-R-G-E-S-O-N at remax.net to get your next deal underway. The Burgesson team, proud sponsors of Inside the Game Cox. Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. I help Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and I help Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it, let them find it. These folks are incredible. I help Consulting how can I help you? This is Fresh and All American, Nicky Memorial of the Carolina Gamecocks, and you are listening to the show with JC and Phil. Welcome back to Inside the Gamecocks, the show, everybody, presented to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give John Barber a call. 
and his team down there. They'll be happy to talk to you about some additions to your home or perhaps something in your backyard, 803-446-4662. And, of course, the first hour of the show is brought to you by Cindy Searfoss and the Colwell Banker Kane Realty Team here in the Upstate. Give Cindy in, uh, a call for all of your upstate residential real estate needs, 864-414-5271. And we appreciate Sawyer coming in and joining us back again for the first time this yeah. year. For the I had to ask him age. about unfairness, unfairness since the... Uh, yeah, I saw that. I was, uh, yeah. I was going so, to uh, I was going to follow up and, and talk about parents of, uh, of these recruits to... Um, that's oh. something I was going to bring up, and then we kind of shifted away from the recruit aspect of it. So it was like, yeah, but we'll we, we'll we'll have him back next week. We can talk about yeah, all we sorts will. of stuff. We'll have him back next week, so that, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, Clint's talking about Michael Smith. He says, watch his film. Looks like a wide receiver, tight end, good speed for a guy's size. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I think it, I mean, and, and that's kind of kind of how Allen and Busta Anderson both were in, in high school. There's some other guys like that too out there. I just Need to think about them. Um, Contra Jeremy says, any truth to the NCAA investigating Clemson over New Springs? Saw some post about it over the weekend, but if you had to hear anything concrete. Well, uh, this happened to my, uh, actually my ex-wife texted me and was like busted. <laughs> and uh, as happens, you know, it, it, it was like, it, some, it looked, if you're out there doing this and you think you're cute, you're not because you're sort of yelling. I mean, you know, you're, you're basically just trying to get a laugh out of it and trolling people and you're not trolling Clemson. You're kind of trolling yourself and Gamecock fans because they buy it because it's hard when you look at Twitter. So yeah, cause, you know, what they basically did feel, they copied the tiger net. Uh, no, hmm. uh, Copied the Tiger Net uh, uh, Twitter account completely, uh, and I think it's at TigerNetcom or so. And so it was at TigerMetcom. <laughs> so you changed the M to the N. And I at looked Spock at it, and I was like, Centra. Well, that shouldn't surprise me. And then, and then I was like, Oh wait a minute, it's fake. And it's like, Ah, oh. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so a lot of people I know got bamboozled by that, but no, I, I can't. I can't imagine that anything will ever come of that. How about that? Uh, especially not in today's climate. Uh, no. Joey says, hey, JC, I know Gamecock insiders normally wait for the kid to announce around here, but is it like that across the landscape? Or do other sites just post-tweet whatever they know? No, nah, it's industry standard to, uh, to do that. Um, but like I said, we're kind of coming out of the glory era of recruiting. And I don't know, you know, I mean, you know, cause you get that information usually from, you know, contacts at the high school contacts in the kids inner circle contacts at a college. Uh, so, so I guess what could happen is you could start getting that info because you don't want to burn your source, you know, right. And these are still kids and you, you want them to have their moment, their prom or whatever. Right. Um, but I suppose you could work around it and, and the schools that don't get the kid <laughs> like, yeah, he's going there. And so yeah. just, boom. <laughs> um, and I, and I thought for a while, just because like, if too many things happened in our business, like the Dontavious Braswell thing, where mm. Braswell basically puts out a top four <laughs> without South Carolina at it, but he's committed to South Carolina. Uh, just to intentionally throw people off. If, if that happened too many times, I think uh, the recruiting media would, would sort of reevaluate that. But it's a nice working relationship. And like I said, these are kids. And look, man, I'd rather just tell you guys he was coming and, and rock and roll and, and let's be done with it and talk about it or whatever. We don't make any more money these days. We don't make any money building up to announcements or anything. Uh, no. used to be, used to be the case, but, uh, when there was true mystery, but there's just not anymore, not anymore. Um, but yeah, it is frowned upon and other sites don't, don't do it. They may drop something on their board. Like I don't expect them to come to the school, but that's it. Uh, VJ says, um, wait a minute. Justin has a good point here. 
I love the dinosaur show from the 90s, not the mama, not the mama, not the mama. <laughs> Uh, VJ says took a deeper look at the recruiting rankings for 2024 last night. Going a nice little run here. Anchored by Reno and Pringle. Today is Smith. Who else has set dates? Uh, Friday, who do we have, Phil? Wendell, what's his name? Wendell, yeah, I can't remember his name. It's Wendell. God, here we go with names again, JC. Mr. Wendell, yeah. Uh, the kid from Marietta Walton, <laughs> uh, the linebacker. But he's supposed to commit Friday. I think Josiah Thompson. Uh, I don't know how close he is. Wendell Gregory. Wendell Gregory. Uh, we, that's right. It, it was like, mm-hmm. was like oh, Sir Wendell Gregory. Oh, yeah, Sir right. Wendell Gregory. Um, that's right. And so, uh, yeah, Wendell Gregory. Uh, you got Josiah Thompson. Braylon Lee is a cornerback from uh, Desmond Umiazulu School. That uh, I don't know if he's close to committing or not. If he'll take visits, but I, you know, Carolina could really they could be sitting. Come, I was told by a contact at Carolina, he said literally we could be sitting with a top five class heading out of heading out of February. Top five, it's pretty good. Oh, how beautiful! It'll that probably would be. finish fifteenth or sixteenth, like it always does. But it, top yeah. five at those some points, good. Uh, you know. Um, so that's it. Brent says, do you think Eddie Lewis could start? Uh, and, and, and if so, in the slaughter outside, it just kind of depends. I'm sort of hopeful that Dowell Loggins is a little bit different with cross training as receivers than Marcus Satterfield was. Um, so, you know, just cause they would stick, he would stick like two good players at one spot. And then, you know, guys that can play dead in the movie and another it's a disaster. Man, then you get two uh, so, weapons that are never on the field at the same time. That was always fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I, now I, think, I think Eddie's kind of a slot guy, to be honest. Maybe outside. Mm. Looks like uh, Meredith says good morning. Good morning, Meredith. Good morning, Mayor. Um, Justin talks about ponytails. Uh, Philip says, Phil, your audio is really loud compared to JC's. The Stan Storm Show says, what's up, JC? Good morning, everyone. What's up, Sandstorm Show? Good morning, Sandstorm. How are you? I think you're making your debut here. Parents need to take a chill pill. The new spring thing was a joke. All those posts were removed. Um, Jesse says, just signing on. Did you see the Twitter video from Clemson fan about Shane's emotional roller coaster? Not going to lie, I love Bieber, and but it's sort of a true and funny video. I didn't see it, but I mean, you know, here, here's the thing. I mean, people people criticizing Beamer for being emotional and all that good stuff. I think you would want that. Um, I like having that you know. passion, you know. And somebody says something about, well, can't he just be like Spurrier and be funny about it? Dude, Spurrier was very emotional. Do you not, guys not remember like the tirade he went on with about <laughs> with Ron Morris and kicked him out of the. Or he kicked himself out of the press conference. You don't remember he got after the Tennessee game and just literally got up and left. He's like, I just can't talk right now. Hmm. Uh, do, do you guys remember, like, before his last year, the big, you know, hey, you guys just all think we're going to be terrible. We're not going to be terrible. Blah, 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 blah. And you end up being terrible. Remember calling Ron Cooper out in the post? I mean, come on, man. Steve Spurrier, hmm. but you loved him for it. Uh, and I understand – there were there was some sense of uh, comfort because he was at Florida all those years and won. And like, oh, you know, but what's wrong with Shane Beamer being emotional? I don't have a problem with it. I mean, the guy. In the Would you view it won, any differently if we won ten games? Yeah, <laughs> eleven. Uh, you know, the, the guy in the Upstates won how many national championships and. I mean, everything from bring your own guts to <laughs> right. yeah, he to gets a bit feisty. Yeah. To, to, the, to after the, the what was it, the, the third straight loss to Carolina of, of five. You know, talking about how Carolina's in Chapel Hill <laughs> and all that. I'm going to defend my program and uh, all in. And I mean, yeah, I mean, come on, man. You know, and, and there's, there's a lot of coaches that aren't as serious as Nick Saban or Urban Meyer that make things happen. You know, uh, and, and I think that uh, I think as long as you win, which Beamer's won so far, I think that's good. And and the same people that complained about that complained about Muschamp. 
being uh, boring. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> For or, the right or, opposite. Or, or, yeah. or using football jar- See, I like the football jargon must champ use. I learn something every time we talk, you know, about not about the actual team, of course, because he was not forthcoming with information about the yeah. team, but about like football jargon, you know. I, I, it's kind of like Belichick, you know. Belichick, if you ever ask him, if you, you, you'll hear the media from New England talk, and they're like, if you just ask him normal questions about, oh, what do you feel about your team? He's like, how do I feel? We're on to Cincinnati. You We're know, Cincinnati. but if you talk to him about like foot X's and ask him to explain something, like draw, draw it up or something, he'll get in, in depth and you'll learn something. You know, that's how I felt about Muschamp, but I'll agree. Toward the end, he didn't want to talk to anybody, and he was just like, you know, and I'll never forget Xavier Leggett had been out the whole year, and nobody knew. Nobody knew. No. <laughs> but, you know, so Beamer's way different than, than Will, and uh, personality-wise, I think he's probably closer to Spurrier. He just doesn't have that uh, Spurrier swagger, right? Shoot, you know. But uh, or the track record, but uh, you know, I don't think people need to leave Beamer alone. I mean, you know, and look, I think it's awesome that Clemson fans are making fun of it because you know what, Beamer's one and one against them. Yeah. So like five hundred record know, against you, yeah. They they almost just quit caring about Muschamp. They were just like, oh, we don't care, <laughs> you know. But now you know, let's get the rivalry back. Let's get a little spice going again, you know. Some of you weren't around for top, the Tommy Bowden, Lou Holtz days. That was when, like, both schools fought over every in-state player because that's all they were really going to get. And, uh, you know, it was uh, – and then Spurrier and Bowden and then Spurrier and Dab. I mean, it, it was it was heated. It was heated. And uh, it, it, since they started winning big and Carolina kind of went through a bunch of transition and weren't so good, then it's not been as fun. But, hey. When in Death Valley kind of makes it fun again, right? So, uh, Clint said if Eddie Lewis doesn't start, it would be a waste uh, since he's only a year. Yeah, but Clint, with wide receivers, you have to think, too, uh, a lot of the quote-unquote starters have to do with, like, what formation you're in to start with, you know, because you may go double tight. I mean, I don't know. You know, that, that's that's the thing there. Uh, I, think he'll, I think he'll play a whole lot. Um, Clint says, I didn't like the response to Mark Ryan sweep. It was unnecessary. He should have just stated the facts and left it at that. You mean like making fun of their Twitter followers? I would have done that differently. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about people's follower count. That doesn't matter. And plus, that's a, that, that account is not like, it's not Mark Ryan's account. It's, uh, it's just the station's account. It just kind of, it's like a bot. It just kind of tweets things. Yeah, that's right. So, just, so you're, yeah. you're really, you know, when you when you start, that's like clowning the, uh, instead of clowning the bartender that's trying to clown you, you clown the uh, the refrigerator full of beer behind the bar. Oh, look at you <laughs> with only 14 beers. <laughs> look at you. Bring out another Miller Lite, I, huh? I don't know why I'm responding to a, a, a cooler full of only 14 beers. Since you're here in this bar and you only have 14 beers in you, you know. <laughs> so I got it, but it didn't. Bo- it didn't bother me, Clint. I mean, I I don't. Th- the follower coming, I would have, I would have called him out. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I love how Beamer is, but they have this quote of not going to be an emotional roller coaster every week, and then proceed to show angry, happy, and crying moments. Yeah, but dude, that's Beamer. That's Shane Beamer. That's not his team, and the team. But wait a minute. This is an interesting point because emotional roller coaster every week, right? If you look at the results on the field, I don't know that it was an emotional roller coaster. Certainly was a roller coaster, though. Yes. Hmm. Interesting point. Hmm. Dabo gets emotional sometimes, I know. Uh, Jesse says, I think we can all be honest. He's a little too much in social media. Media things, the response to Mark was a little too much. I, I just don't, I, you know, making fun of their followers, yes. Responding to someone that continuously takes shots at your program, no. And I'll tell you this, it works in recruiting. The players love him for that. So, they love I mean, that and that's fire. really, yeah. mm-hmm. that's really what matters. That's really what matters. Uh, Ryan says he learned from Muschamp that Thanksgiving is a meal. <laughs> 
I'll never forget that. No. Uh, yeah. I'll never forget when he said that, man. And then they went. Mm-hmm. They immediately ran and asked Abba, like immediately. Yeah, Dabba, of course. Yeah. Is Thanksgiving think? a meal or a holiday? And Dabo's like, oh, man, it's a holiday. It's to be here with family and Jesus and the Lord and all this good stuff. And he just made Must Champ look like crap. Look like an idiot, yeah. Yeah. So Meredith says 3130. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I, I get it. I just think, you know, let Shane be Shane. And I'll tell you this, though. When you do sort of do that and put yourself out like that and you don't win it wears thin i mean and look i'm not saying he hasn't worn thin in certain aspects i mean i know i kind of got sick of hearing how great marcus satterfield was <laughs> who didn't yeah right yeah, who man, did yeah. you know yeah. and, and all that by the way here's something interesting from sarah satterfield and i wonder i, I just kind of <laughs> wonder what this means now it could be nothing it could be something i'm not trying to stir the pot or maybe I am. You guys know I'm not really a pot stirrer, but this is interesting. So, Matt Rule gets quoted. I had my first team meeting last night. I'm one of those guys that don't let cameras in. There won't be a camera following me around. I want it to always be about the players, Coach Rule. Retweeted by Sarah H. Satterfield. Look at that. Now, look, I'd like to think that's not a shot at Shane Beamer, right? I'd like to think that. Maybe it is. Maybe it didn't. This is the person that called the entire fan base a bunch of idiots because her husband was failing miserably. But uh, I don't know. Garrett says, uh, 076 says, my favorite moment was Muschamp's initial intro when he sort of commented about Dabo's wife liking it. <laughs> he did. And he, he actually told Dabo that to his face. He's like, your wife has a crush on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, people don't get that side of Will Muschamp. They never will. I'll never convince anybody otherwise. But the, the dude's actually like, I mean, like, let's just say, let's just say hypothetically, um, he and Kirby Smart and Mike Bobo were on a fraternity together at Georgia. I don't think they were, but if they were, Will Muschamp would be the life of that fraternity, dude. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Um, okay, so so we're gonna we're gonna hit a break, KFC. I don't think we're gonna be able to stream it because it's on Instagram. Uh, Is it? But I, I think so. Ooh, it's on Instagram. I might uh, be able to if it's Instagram. Hold on. Well, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna take a break and we'll be right back and rock and roll uh, and, and see if we can find. If not, we'll have verbal updates for you right here on the show. Just as your State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home, auto, life, or small business insurance with Tony Pope State Farm Insurance today. And guess what you'll get? That's right, even more good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, Tony Pope State Farm is your go-to agent anywhere in South Carolina, North Carolina, or Georgia for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try combining your home, life, auto, and or small business insurance today. Tony Pope State Farm has been in business for more than 30 years and can handle anything you need in the tri-state area. Once again, Tony Pope State Farm will help you mix and match perfectly. Call 843-851-2222 or visit TonyPope.com today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That one, easy. He's got a tire by the tail he has. He better hang on to. People have spoken. Nana's Porch was voted the third best food truck or trailer by the Charlotte newspaper Public Poll. Also, their pimento cheese mm, took third in a contest exclusively for products made in the state of North Carolina. I will let Noah Hall tell you about the rest. Nana's Porch, Southern Cuisine with an Uptown Twist. If you're in the upstate of South Carolina and are in need of residential real estate services, Cindy Bass Searfoss of Caldwell Banker Kane is for you. Ask her about the village at Creekside, all of her listings in my hometown of Spartanburg, South Carolina, right there on Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a lifelong Gamecock fan. And many of our listeners have already bought homes from her and been 100% satisfied with the detail and care she uses. Cindy Searfoss, 864 414-5271 414-5271 Caldwell Banker Kane in the upstate for your real estate needs. 
This is Braylon Wimmer, South Carolina Gamecock Baseball, and you are listening to Inside the Gamecocks, the show with JC and Phil. Go Cox! Welcome back to the show, everybody. The show is brought to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. But I'm sorry, we had a private chat here. I, was, <laughs> I got distracted, JC. But give John Barber and his team a call in Lexington, 803-446-4662. They'd be happy to talk to you about a potential outdoor retreat for your backyard, enclosing a porch or a patio. Um, but uh, he and his team are there to help. No obligation consultation. And they'll give you $500 off if you mention you heard it here. I uh, just saw the link you sent me. I'm going to pull it up and yeah, see what I wonder if we can do this. So this is the Gamecock Central stream. I don't... Because we stream this that? on YouTube on the Big Spur. and uh, See, so, I was trying to get it through his um, Instagram. Instagram? Yeah. But I don't yeah. know what his Instagram handle is. I guess they're there live. Yeah, so are our guys. I just and don't think they're streaming it. They can, I don't yeah. think they can stream yeah. it on on this right now. But uh, his, his Instagram account? Hold on. It's, uh, well, Michael Smith Instagram. Michael Smith Calvary Day Instagram. All right, so here we go. By the way, Nat, Nat took a shot at... At uh, Sarah Satterfield. <laughs> and what's um, funny so is I think is. Satterfield it's... was actually talking more about Dion, at least from the comments yeah. that she got. That's probably what it was looking like. <laughs> that's crazy. So that's funny. What yeah. Matt said, all right. But... So that's that's his. Um... <sighs> that's his Twitter. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Here he's. Is it P. Mike Smith? Oh, this is ridiculous. No, wrong guy. Anyway, so I know, Nat I, says, I just went through that too. <laughs> so we have it streaming on the TBS Facebook. No, we didn't. Oh, South okay. Carolina Gamecocks at 24 7 source. All right, so we should have it for you. Um, Facebook. Yeah, Nat took it. She was like, Mr. Satterfield's just defending her man. I wonder if she calls the plays too. It seemed like it a couple times, right? Yeah. Hey, let me, <laughs> hey, let me know. Probably would have been better. All right, so we're going to try to pull this up for you guys. Michael Smith, four star, tied in. It looks like he's sitting. He's sitting at the. Uh, there's a big old Calvary. That's a big football right there. Uh, you got the Calvary Day helmet. It's like some family members. <coughs> I'll give you a little play by play while Phil's efforting it off the Big Spur Facebook page. Um, so we'll see. I guess that's mom. It's a nice looking uh, letter jacket he's got on there. Uh, they're they're uh, oh, it froze, it froze. Well, they look kind of like Christ Church, I think, with the the symbol there, Calvary Day. Um, and here we go. He's uh, he's about to get rolling. Uh, sounds not on. He's like, uh, wait, wait. TV cameras are there. Phil is still efforting, efforting. Uh, will the hat fit, Ryan? That's a good question. I had that question myself. As someone who does, who's, cannot fit a hat on his head, uh, I know that. Come on, Philly. Uh oh, here we go. And it's and it's and it's. What do you like, Larry? Money and it's spinning and it's spinning and it's going and it's spinning. And he's shrugging his shoulders. And it's. We got it. Thing. Is it dragging the whole thing down now? There we go. Here we go, guys. All right. We don't have enough power. We don't have the power. I can't hear Phil at all now. I hope you guys are hearing me. Um, So, Michael Smith, uh, we're trying. We're trying. This this is not. This is not going to work. Can you hear the video? I can't. It's frozen up completely. Uh, I mean, it's like, wow. So, um, 
Gosh, I guess I'm behind on the other one. Shoot, I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see if he picks South Carolina. Just uh, hang tight, folks. Hang tight. Again, Michael Smith, we're trying to do this uh, and get everybody in there. Phil sounds like a transformer, uh, like a Decepticon. So, anyway, I hope you guys are watching uh, wherever you're watching. Uh, we, we don't really dabble in, like, live events here. Uh, we got to get that better. Uh, before we can uh, we can actually do that, but certainly uh, certainly we uh, appreciate you guys coming in. Ryan says the hamster can only run so fast. Phil, uh, probably be a few minutes. They're praying right now. Not so uh, much. <laughs> Phil, Phil get Spectrum, man, not AT and T. I am. That's the thing, Rodney. I am on Spectrum. Yeah. I'm supposed to be blazing fast. <laughs> when I was in Greenville, I actually had AT and T at my apartment, and it was fine. Now I've had AT and T other places, and Chunk the whole damn thing out the window. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> I was like, "No, this sucks badly." It was awful. I was trying uh, my best to uh, like shut everything else down. Like I, I run, I don't run a lot of stuff while we're actually on the air because it's you know just too much for my little HP to handle. But that's what happened. It's, it's not uh, it's not charter, not charter spectrum, but it's it's yeah. my laptop. <laughs> Uh, Craiger says JC already knows he's committed. Um, just not ruining it. Nat has a Scotty uh, from Star Trek impersonation. Phil, right. give it some more power. Give it some more power. <laughs> our, our boy, wait a minute, our boy Tim from Down Under. Good night, clowns. Just put no. the baby down. Thought I'd check in on the show. Happy Wednesday, clowns from the future. He's from the future. That's right. Tim it's is it's from Wednesday the in Australia. Yeah. Good night, Tim. Tim. Good night, over here and me Subaru Outback. <laughs> me koalas. <laughs> hey, Bloomin' Onion. So anyway, I'm, I'm still trying to, you know, find this, uh, find something to kind of let us know. And, uh, StreamYard did apologize for not being able to do that, which is funny. That's the platform we they, use they, to bring this to everybody. For... Yeah, they were like, we're sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was so... just too much. You didn't have enough power. Didn't have enough powder. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, Gamecock Central doesn't catch me in the uh, live stream as the big spur. <laughs> uh, oh no! Shoot! No! No! Don't! 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 Don't put! I, I hit a button. All right. So he's talking now. Um, he's talking, talking, talking. Ohio State, Tennessee, South Carolina. Somebody in their chat box says, "This is a Loggins effect." Blah, blah, blah. Uh, somebody says something off color. Uh, all right, so here we go. Oh, it froze up. Froze up. Hold on. He put the hat on. He's a Gamecock. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I have it. I, I, he's a Gamecock. So there you go. There's my play by play. Um, Mom, I'm assuming that's dad too. Everybody's got on a hat. Everybody's happy. They got Gamecock hats on. The hat fit, Ryan. Nice. And all that good stuff. Reform Manho. That is a hell of a name, man. <laughs> I did Ask on that. any word what which analyst USC may lose gain. Uh, Beamer hired a new one. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Yurichek. That's the AD at Arkansas. Hunter Yurichek's son. I think came from, came from Austin P. Pretty good young coach. As far as anybody leaving, I was asked today on 107.5 if Freddie Kitchens would be leaving or something. I don't know. I mean, with Freddie specifically, I would kind of watch the NFL coaching carousel, but it's already kind of started there. There hasn't been a lot of movement in the NFL uh, this year. All right, so we're going to get a break and collect our thoughts because we just tried to do something live, and it was bad. Uh, and Tim from Down Under just committed up. Up the mighty cooks. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Uh Love the entertainment. Plus, he was a day uh, game cock. Today was a good day in his ice cube voice. Seventy six says so. Welcome home, and uh, hopefully, I can get you guys where uh, South Carolina moved to. It's early. There was only three commits, but uh, moved to in the uh, the team rankings for twenty twenty four. That once they get to four, that should that should move them up quite a bit. Anyway, we're gonna have a break. I'm gonna update the database. See if I can get that information for you guys. We'll be back after these messages. Hey, man. Are you sick and tired of your business computer guy? Yes, he takes forever to call me back and doesn't always respond to the requests. Yeah, same here. I'm paying him good money. I constantly have issues, and I'm worried he's not backing up my network and securing it properly. 
Oh, I feel that, man. My head hurts, but I have a good lead on a good idea. I'm calling your boy Matthew Odom today from Heritage Digital. Heritage Digital is an IT firm that specializes in making sure your IT network runs like a dream. If you have one or 500 employees, it doesn't matter. They do it all for one monthly fee and have clients from South Carolina all the way to California. Yeah, I heard that monthly fee's low too, so I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Uh, Do you have 843-699-1001 as Matt's contact number? Yeah, man, I sure do that. Or you can go to heritagedigital.com. Man, I hear they do a no-cost assessment. Boy, this will help me. Yeah, I bet. (laughs) I'm getting on that and encouraging everyone else to do the same. Heritage Digital, 843-699-1001 or heritagedigital.com, a proud sponsor of Inside the Gamecocks the show you can't handle the truth gamecock nation do you need a place to stay for the big game many hotel booking engines keep all the commissions but at fan plans you support inside the gamecocks still earn your hotel loyalty points and you receive an email with direct confirmation from the hotel whether you are visiting columbia to cheer on carolina or hitting the road to follow the team get in the stands with fan plans Yep, time to get back to the show. Shoot. All right, my man. Welcome back to Inside the Game, Cox, everybody. The show is presented to you by Express Sunrooms in Columbia. Give them a call, 803-446-4662, to talk about a potential sunroom addition on your house. And we've got Michael Smith in the fold. Yeah, four-star tight end. In. Four star tight end. He's a nice big kid here. Let's Calvary uh, Calvary uh, Calvary Day School in Savannah, Georgia. Another guy in Georgia, man. You know, like yeah. It's about getting the right guys. That's about you know the 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 staff is hitting the right tier of player from over there. You know, I, I think that it, it, it's those guys. You know, I mean, look, it'd be great if one day this program could go head to head. Uh, with Georgia, uh, in Georgia, and, and sign half of them kind of like Alabama does, <laughs> or, or like Auburn it sometimes did with Georgia depth a little, uh, but, but they're probably not there yet. But you know, Auburn has had a pretty successful program over the years, and they make a living off of kids like this. Um, you know, I, I've seen so many Tennessee take kids like this, uh, Clemson. I um, mean, you know, it's a uh, it's a smart play, and especially nowadays because the number of high-level prospects, yes, and, it, and whoever said it moved to Carolina up to 11th in the rankings, it did. The number of high-level prospects in Georgia has expanded as the population has, uh, and Georgia can't take them all. So, uh, but, yeah, he's uh, the number 134 overall player in the country, uh, the number six tight end in the country, the number, but see, check this out. The number twenty-four player in Georgia. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> Highly rated nationally, but not at Georgia. So um, obviously, uh, big news on the heels of Cam Pringle, uh, and then you know you got the Wendell Gregory announcement coming up. That's another Georgia kid, uh, four-star guy from uh, the Atlanta area, not from the coast. Um, shoot, I can't remember or recall. A start like this with this high level of a pro, of prospects jumping in this early uh, since I've been covering Carolina. And, I mean, usually this takes a little while, you know. We're in January. <laughs> uh, of course, you got, you got to hold on to them now. You know, that's problematic sometimes. Uh, but really good player, um, uh, all that. VJ says, I saw that uh, Dante Reno was the number two quarterback. For 2024 behind Nelson, it predicted Reno to UCLA. I'd be shocked. (laughs) Mm. Um, But I don't know. Maybe somebody else has thoughts of that. Number one, I don't know that Dante's a fit in what Chip Kelly likes to do. Mm. You know? Um, Do you? I I don't know. Um. Uh, okay, so Saunders says, I don't really watch commit videos, but the Marquis Anderson, is Mark Marquis at what Montague? Pancake syrup reveal was one that will live rent free in my head forever. I was in the car, man. That thing lasted forever. 
I was sitting there, we're about to go in the mall, and I'm like, all right, okay, all right, let's go. Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Meredith says, have a great rest of the show, guys. I'm coaching five golf lessons this, this afternoon. Busy, busy, busy. Can't wait to hear the big news dropping tomorrow. Mm-hmm. The big news. Mm, the big news. Uh, Craiger says, beat some good teams for him. You did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stacy says, was the welcome home from December 5th, apparently. Yes, it was. This was uh, this guy was um, already welcome homed. Um, I don't know that Shane, t- did Shane tweet out a welcome home on Pringle? I think we're missing one. I think we're. I think there's still one unaccounted for. Yes. Uh, for twenty three. Uh, yeah, maybe so. I am the late stone. How many years of NFL experience is currently on the staff? Seems like the number is as high as it's ever been. Man, I'd have to figure that up. See, so who else coached in the NFL on, on, on the staff? I'll, I'll go through it. So, Adkins is coached in the NFL, but he's Adkins is now off the field, but he's still on the staff. So he's coached in the NFL. Dow Loggins, obviously. Jody Kitchen Wright Lines. was with the Giants. Yeah. Um, Lonnie Teasley has not been in the NFL. I think he may have interned at, with one of the franchises. Uh, what else is it? Monterio Hardesty has not been in the NFL. Justin Stepp has not been in the NFL. Torian Gray has been in the NFL. Jimmy Lindsay, not. Uh, Sterling Lucas, yes. Clayton White, no. Uh, but then analyst, Freddie Kitchens obviously has. Um the new guy they hired, I don't think so. So, Wayne says, awesome. Any thoughts about the linebacker from Georgia? I think Carolina's in pretty good shape. I mean, it's Carolina. Now, he's got a more defined uh, trio of finalists. Um, with Smith, obviously, some of us know some things. <laughs> and don't, don't spoil it. But uh, anytime you have a kid that, you know, has eight, nine finalists, <laughs> Chances are he knows exactly where he's going. Um, <laughs> and notice he had no other hats out there or anything like that. When, when it gets down to three, and if one school especially, and I'm thinking about Tennessee, and I, I don't know kind of what they're doing right now with regards to this kid, but uh, you're down to three and you have a two, two is doing everything they can to stop it. It's like, uh, what's that movie, The Graduate, where Dustin Hoffman shows up at the church? do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Most of all, you got to hide it from the kids. Don't go to Carolina, Wendell Gregory. Orange looks so good on you. Ooh, ooh. What's that you say, Wendell Gregory? Rocky Top does it. I want you to go away. A, 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 A. That's how it is, sort of. But, uh, yeah, Kruger said uh, ends coach was at Jacksonville. Yeah, Sterling Lucas. Jacksonville and the Ravens. Um, did I not mention Sterling Lucas? I thought I did. I thought I Lucas thought, yeah. and Torian Gray. Or did I, did I skip him? You just did Torian, and then yeah, we missed Sterling Lucas. Oh, yeah. my bad. Yeah, Sterling Lucas was in the NFL. Will McClain, 100% blue ship ratio so far in 2024. Not too bad. National championship. That's right. You take it. <laughs> because that's all the blue chip ratio means. <laughs> it's the biggest Captain Obvious theory in the history of recruiting. I know, I know. That's why. What's one reason like, for, like for TCU Madden. to do so well? It was like, yeah, prove this wrong. Prove them. Uh, okay, you know, never mind. <laughs> I, I, res- I mean, I respect Bud for coming up with it because it's it's sort of one of those things you can't argue with, right? Yeah, no, you can't no. argue with it because uh, it's true, but it's so like surface level. It's, it's like, kind of like I when you what? you know say my sources say. <laughs> <laughs> or when you when you go, you uh, can't refute that. Well, you know what? Yeah, your sources probably did say. <laughs> it's like uh, it's kind of like uh, you know, hey, the the quarterback that you know has the best fundamentals is usually the the best quarterback. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like the John Matt, the better quarterback is, it, is probably going to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you hear Caliendo during Madden. He's like, hey, you know, he says like, you do that, you do that. When you run the ball, that's when you win. And that's when you win the game. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> Pat Summerall sitting over there, three sheets to the wind. 
Well, I saw a Big meme on shot. Twitter the other day with the two of them sitting there. It was like the guy that was drunk and the guy who sounded like he was drunk. And <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I've said for, for a while, I think I thought that the next step in recruiting for Carolina um, was to get more blue chip talent from the high school ranks. I, and I said, gradually, I didn't. You know, it didn't have to be, oh, my God, this – because I, I do think their 2022 class is going to be sneaky good. Um, I, I think 2023 is even better. It's a line of scrimmage class, so we may not even see a whole lot out of it, you know, early, but it'll make an impact. And then this class sets up pretty nicely for the Gamecocks. Um, and, and if you think about it, this class is one they've been working on for a couple of years, building these relationships with these kids – um, I think, uh, pretty solid with, uh, you know, the facilities kicking in comfort with this staff, uh, showing players, uh, the home atmosphere at Williams Bryce, which was, which came back and, and really surpassed all expectations this year. Um, having other great players come all that impacts your recruiting. And sometimes that takes time to establish. That's what drives me crazy when people were like mad about last year's high school group, uh, even though, you know, Spencer Rattler and Juice Wells came into that class and a lot of other good players. But, uh, you know, oh, losers, and they're not recruiting that well. And, uh, I'm like, look, it takes time. And they got a lot of good players last year and won a lot of battles. So this, you know, 2023, same thing, but a little better, probably a lot better. You know, 13 players, four stars are above. And now 2024 is off to a big, big start with three guys uh, that are in the top 300 in the country, um, including a stud tight end out of Georgia. And we'll see what happens uh, on Friday with Wendell Gregory. Um, Wayne says, I'm down here in Jacksonville, Florida, and listening to talk radio. It's amazing how they just dismiss USC. I can't wait for some revenge in Willie B against Florida. They're so entitled. Their program thinks they're better than ours. Well, well, let me just tell you about Florida. Okay, so they went and fired Dan Mullen, who's a really good coach. Probably, probably not the, you know, probably not a person you'd want to have a beer with, but you know, a, a really good coach, right? Um, you know, so he gets there in 2018, right? So I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll out some reality to you about the Florida Gator program, and I know they beat the crap out of Carolina. And that should have never happened. And I think Shane Beamer and everybody else knows it. And I think that was a necessary butt whipping because it facilitated change. And I think most of you would agree the last two wins of the season were sweet <laughs> compared to having if you go if you go beat Florida for a second year in a row. All right, so so his first class in twenty eighteen was fourteenth. This is Dan Mullen we're talking about. All right, so 2019 rolls in, and, and they were ninth in the country, number nine nationally. Wow. Isn't that something? 2020, okay, Danny Kicks on the recruiting trail. Keep in mind, this is a guy that they swear can't recruit. Seventh in the country. Wow, okay. 2021, after he won the uh, SEC East during the pandemic, it was kind of a hard uh, recruiting class for everybody, 12th. Very, very uh, competitive nationally, right? All right, so Napier comes in. And, you know, you're not going to have your top-rated class your first year. He comes in, respectable 17th. But wait a minute, look at 2023. 14th. This is supposed to be this big year, right? Yeah. So... He's got a, 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 about 1,300 off-the-field staffers down there, you know. Um, they promised a quarterback recruit $13 million. <laughs> and then said, no, nah, we're sorry, we can't give it to you. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't see, like, where this has been this big recruiting, uh, I guess, uh, step forward in recruiting for them, uh, if you go by the numbers. I'm sure they have some really good players. Uh, I think Billy Napier is a really good coach. Um, but they can dismiss Carolina all they want. 
whatever. That, that series is what seven, seven to six, something like that. Last thirteen years. It should have probably been a little more Carolina's in because I think Muschamp should have beaten them in 2018. And blew a big lead. Um, so yeah. I am the late census. Florida's in a world of hurt. Craig said winning those two games at the end had to have a huge impact on these guys coming. Uh, recruits have to see some big wins. Yeah, and the Texas A&M game too, Craig. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's – recruits aren't all so much worried about whether you win or lose, right? Um, but they just want a big atmosphere. They want to have a good time. They're high school kids. And if they didn't grow up fans of your school or they're not coming in, they're not sitting there cheering. Now, the great thing that I noticed this year, a lot of these guys were cheering and very engaged. Mm-hmm. Very engaged. Oh, Connor says the 2019 Florida game stung too. Yeah, um, you know, prior to the uh, Jeff Coat decision, and I swore I wouldn't bring it up, but that was the most unfair thing I've witnessed. Right. <laughs> when, when dude has dude has a fistful of jersey and then he's going down the field and then he grabs somebody else's jersey. And he grabbed two of them. Yeah. Two hands and the ref's full. just running right <laughs> along beside him in the rain and you're like, what in the world? Um <laughs> Quantrell says, JC, do you think if Beamer ever got the program to consistently winning eight or nine games, he could be poached by bigger schools? Or do you see him wanting to build Carolina into a power? Here's the thing, Quantrell. If, if well, consistently win an eight or nine, that doesn't necessarily make you a bigger school. But if he breaks, th- here, here's what everybody will have to decide. Okay, if you if you because South Carolina's never experienced this. You know, they've had one coach that was here ten and a half years that had a lot of success, probably not as much as he should have. Um, but that was just a game here, a game there, and that's the way the game goes. Uh, and everybody else has kind of been like five, six years and out, right? No consistency. Uh, if Beaver wins eight or nine games a year and doesn't get any higher than that and can't break break through, then I think if you're a competitor and you, you're chasing the ultimate prize, you, you, you kind of like Brian Kelly, you know, you're kind of like, well, where can I go uh, that I can have the resources to do it? Okay. Now, do I think Shane Beamer, that's his plan? No. Because uh, I, I think that he believes South Carolina doesn't. Ha- South Carolina can't be a big school in football. And look, I, I, I'll point this out. You, you know the divisions are going away in a couple of years, guys. Uh, so, so I went and did the standings. Like, what, what if it was a fourteen team? And I was kind of thinking, oh, Carolina's probably about a seventh. Or, South Carolina finished tied for fifth in the SEC. In 14, 14 teams. As flawed as uh, the offensive coordinator was. And, uh, you know, and, and all that. So, uh, you probably really could have lost out a third, too, this year, too. <laughs> yeah, could have been better because they lost, mm-hmm. ultimately lost to three, six, and six football teams, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so, and that's in year two under Shane Beamer. So, I don't, I don't know that South Carolina, you know, some of these schools that are, that are the name brands, the minute they start to cycle up, they cycle back down, and, and then they fire coaches and start, oh, I don't know that South Carolina's in that position right now. And I think it's good. Now, you say that, and for sure they set it out at Arkansas last year, right? And then they got off to a great start, we're in the top five, and then boom, the bottom fell out. This league is very, very unforgiving. Uh, but but I, I think Beamer, it's probably his dream is to build this into, like, you know, his Virginia Tech. Um, like his dad did. Uh, now, look, I say that, but Frank Beamer also interviewed for a lot of jobs and was extremely close to taking North Carolina to the point people were reporting it. Uh, interviewed for Carolina, interviewed for Clemson. Uh, I think interviewed for Georgia at one point. Just stayed at Virginia Tech. Uh, so, you know, never say never. But uh, I think as long as Shane Beamer feels appreciated and Feels like he has support from the administration and the fan base and everybody else. They're recruiting well and they're winning. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't see him going anywhere. I, I think this is a, uh, he's not lying when he says it's his dream job. Uh, that said, Brian Kelly, I mentioned him. Sure, Notre Dame was his dream job when he got it, and then he was like, "I'm tired of beating my head against the wall. I want to win a national championship because that guy paid his dues, right?" Grand Valley State, you know, worked his way on up. 
He's like, I'm getting old. I need to get someplace I can get the talent to win a national championship because, you know, Notre Dame would get in these games with these really good teams in the playoffs. Um, and, yeah, I know they beat Carolina this year and, you know, all that. But, uh, you know, they'd run into Alabama or a really good Clemson team or something just get slaughtered because they just didn't have the athletes. They couldn't keep up with those teams. LSU, you can get the players. Uh, the same reason Mike, the late Mike Leach went to Mississippi State because he's, you know, you can get better athletes in Mississippi State by, you know, throwing a rock <laughs> yeah, than, than you can in Pullman, Washington, or Lubbock, Texas. It's just how it is. Um, Quantrell says, uh, blah, blah, blah. Trevor says, never seen such dog poop calls live at, against Florida. Yeah, it was bad. I mean, and look, that was that was another unfortunate must champ moment, right? Yeah. Uh, and it was against the team he used to coach, too, yet again for a second straight year because – you know, Carolina went all right. So Carolina had beaten Kentucky. I mean, and look, they had so they had two inexcusable losses plus Alabama. You know, they lost to North Carolina. Jake's out for the year. Played Alabama tough, but then going on the road and losing to a Missouri team you had beaten three straight times that ended up being average as grits was inexcusable by twenty. You know, because you had a freshman throw a pass at the two yard line. <laughs> We were at a wedding that day, me and Phil. Yes. <laughs> Never forget that. Um, <laughs> and it's an unforgettable wedding. Unforgettable. But uh, in a lot of ways. But, um, you know, so, so he does that. But then Carolina comes back. They beat Kentucky, snap the, the streak, and then they go beat freaking Georgia in Athens 20 to 17. So you come back, Florida's in the top 10, but you let one get away from them last year. Carolina's playing their butt off. It's raining. Kyle Trask does a pick. Uh, Tavian and Feaster, because in that Florida game, y'all remember, Rico Dowdle gets hurt, like, the second play of the game. But Tavian and Feaster goes off. Mon Denson's going off. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, Florida desperately needs momentum. And they run Damian Pierce around the side, and everybody holds, but it's a 75-yard touchdown because the rest <laughs> missing. And, uh, and Carolina did do some things to screw that up, too. Uh, there was another pass inside the five that didn't make any sense that McClendon called. But uh, anyway, yeah, that and then it, then the next week up at Tennessee, the second half, things fell apart. And that's kind of when I got off the Muschamp bandwagon. Not that I wasn't hoping he would succeed because he's a good guy and all that, but I was like, this is probably not going to work out. And it didn't. Um, Quantrell says, only reason I ask uh, – is because on cover three, a lot of the guys were saying eight wins is extremely great for Carolina as a program. Kind of pissed me off because Carolina's thrown together three 11 win seasons. Yeah, well, they're always just going to say that's Steve Spurrier. Yeah. Um, eight that's wins that old this school year. school mentality, too, you know. Uh, eight wins this year. Look, the number of wins, I mean, you, you kind of look at it and you go, yeah, that's fine. Set year two. You know, seven and six to eight and five, that's great. But that's the three, six and six teams. Could have been better. You know, it's not like this team's that far away. But those guys on that podcast, look, man, that's, uh, and I got respect for them because they're part of the CBS network and all that, but they're never going to give Carolina any love. You know, they're worried about other programs, right? <laughs> uh, and, uh, their theory is probably, you know, some of the old, I guess, tired theories about it and stuff about the program here. Oh, it's too close to Georgia. It's too close to this, too close to that. But um, it, it, it's not extremely great. Eight wins is not the ceiling for this program. Nine at Vanderbilt, what James Franklin did, there's your yeah. ceiling. Right. There's, a yeah. ceiling. <laughs> there's a ceiling for a program, okay? Uh, what Kansas did this year? There you go. Although Kansas under uh, B.F. Mangino had uh, what? He had, they had an 11 win year with the Orange Bowl. Um, so, uh, you know, programs do have ceilings, but but some of these people don't. Uh, like I said, and, and look, somebody put a tweet out the other day or graphic or something. Uh, what was it? Top 25 wins in the SEC since 2000. South Carolina was fifth in the league or tied for fifth in the league. Yet, 
these programs that have won half that number, you know, that they just have these brands, everybody's like, er, 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 and they get and their recruiting rankings are jacked up and everything else. And look, I'm not saying South Carolina has arrived by any stretch. I'm just saying it, it's awfully funny in this game sometimes that like res, like again, like I talked about yesterday, feelings matter over facts sometimes. <laughs> Feelings matter over facts. Um, Clint says, do we not time Harbor announces next week? Nah, I think they're going to win on Clint TV. Uh, we'll see kind of how they announce it, though. And we'll we'll talk to some folks and uh, figure this out. Uh, maybe we can stream it uh, if things are looking good. Um, Saunders says, that Alabama game was one of the hottest I've been to in Columbia. Yeah, man, I was... It was brutal. I, I didn't go. I was in Atlanta that day. I actually watched it from the house instead of going to Dive Bar where we used to have these watch parties. Uh, just watched it from the crib, and it was, like, sweltering. Hmm. Um, Brandon has a question. He said, uh, last year there was a lot of buzz about NC State transfer Terrell Dawkins, but I've never seen him play. Was he injured? Do you expect him to play this year? That's the hope, man. We had a big discussion about uh, Terrell Dawkins on the message board today. I think it's critical that he not only gets healthy, but takes a step forward playing wise. Um, Cause I don't know. I don't know that even before he got hurt that he was challenging for a starting spot or whatever, but I think, uh, I, I think that would be huge, huge. If, um, if they got him ready and, and right and ready to go, uh, obviously with the situation at a defensive end, um, I know a lot of folks that, uh, around NC State, and then also kind of evaluated him in the portal. That really liked the kid, so I, I don't know that he's uh, super. Um, I don't know that he's super duper. Uh, uh, I guess. Let me back up. I lost my train of thought because I saw another question here. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know that he's like a lost cause, right? Super duper yeah. in the hole in the tank, right? So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Brandon says, where is Hyatt going? Kentucky, maybe. Who is Hyatt? Is it Devin? Is it Jalen's brother? I wouldn't take him if I were Kentucky. Not trying to be <laughs> ugly. <laughs> uh, but that, that dude's not, that dude didn't have his brother's speed. So, uh, VJ's going to put it out in the universe. Carolina closes with Harbor and Caldwell. And Caldwell's a pretty, pretty good bet there. Guys, I don't feel good about Harbor, and it's not based on any information I have uh, because the feedback from within is pretty uh, pretty positive. I just so, – I, I don't know whether it's just – I don't have a feel for it. I just can't see him coming to South Carolina, but then I don't really know where he's going to go. I, I don't know. It's a weird thing. So uh, we'll see sort of what happens. But uh, that'd be good. Connor said an F two fifty almost ran over my ankle while I was tailgating at that Bama game. Tyra left a scuff mark on my leg. Came that close to a shattered ankle. My God. Oh man, that's you, yeah. you should have gotten in the driver's face, man. Or was that your fault? <laughs> well, Whose yeah. fault was it, Connor? <laughs> that's right. Who was how many, at fault? How many lattes? <laughs> I'll tell you this, uh, they, uh, my uncle, who's passed on, um, and he, uh, he's, he, he's kind of a, I don't know, a, a jerk kind of guy, you know, but my family from Myrtle Beach, my mom, this is my mom's family. They, uh, pat, they were full scholarship since the fifties of the Gamecock club. Uh, my, my grandfather who built the sea mist resort with his bare hands, uh, basically, <laughs> with his bare hands, um, started it. And he went to Carolina, Carolina people, you know, on that side. But back then under Williams Bryce, you had scholarship parking, like right next to the stadium, literally. And, uh, he's, my uncle's bald, right? Nothing against bald people, but, uh, he was bald, but, but, but he was, he's kind of one of these people that just like, you know, get out of my way. I'm important or whatever. So he's in his Cadillac and he, pulls out and my dad and my mom are sitting back with me and I was a little tight and he runs over somebody's toes and then he has to stop because of traffic and this big old dude look like cornbread cowboy and suspenders gets in his face he's like you ball headed son bitch 
I'll never forget that as long as I live. And he did not, my uncle did not say a word. He just like looked straight ahead and pulled off like it was nothing. <laughs> can I say, can I say that? I guess I can say that word. I didn't say, Some, I didn't quote, spell that it was out. a quote. Yeah, that was a that quote was a from Smokey quote. and the Bandit, right? Yeah. So, so, woman lives Clint, some bitch. <laughs> Clint, Clint feels pretty good about Harbor. He feels good about it. I think he likes our staff the best, and his girlfriend will be here. Girlfriend I think the girlfriend thing, thing's what's getting you, me. That's, I think that's what's that, keeping me from being all in. Same, 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 same. <laughs> High school relationships. Yeah, that's... Because here's his opportunity for a clean break to go across country and not be anywhere near her. Have to listen. To just, freedom, I won't bring you down. Freedom. I just, yeah, I was. I've, I've been in a similar situation to that, and yeah. Garrett says, "I think we're going to feel iffy about any five star guy until Beamer actually gets a view and proves we can do it." Getting five stars is very overrated. They're nice. Don't get me wrong. Keep in mind, Will Muschamp. Signed just as many five stars as Steve Spurrier. <laughs> there we go. How about Peterson that? says, <laughs> can we get the girlfriend an NIL deal? She's a, didn't she run in track? Yeah. Is that what she'd she is? Elo- she's a, she's she'd a track be eligible athlete. for an NIL deal. But like oh, yeah. I said, you give her all that money and Harper's going to be like, uh, listen, baby, um, this isn't going to work. <laughs> I'm moving on to brighter pastures. Man. Oh, man. All right. We'll be back to wrap this up on a Tuesday edition. Don't forget, Jamie Bradford's joining us tomorrow right here on the show. Back after these messages. If you're looking to sell or buy multifamily property right here in South Carolina, the Burgesson team of Remax at the Lake can help you get to closing fast and easy. Adam and Derek Burgesson both are very proud Gamecocks and are more than happy to assist you with any of your commercial real estate needs all across the state. You can email Adam at aburgesson at remax.net. That's A-B-E-R-G-E-S-O-N at remax.net to get your next deal underway. The Burgesson team, proud sponsors of Inside the Gamecocks. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. What's up, Gamecock fans? This is Pitcher Noah Hall. If you want some delicious food for your event, I suggest visiting nanasports.com today to find out what they all have to offer. It's really good southern cuisine based out of Charlotte, my hometown. I hope you guys go check it out. Go Cox and go Nanas. I've been expecting you, Mr. Powers. Sometime in the near future, there's a good chance I'll move back to my home area of the upstate of South Carolina. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's nobody I would use to help me find a new home except Cindy Bass Searfoss of Caldwell Banker Kane, located in my hometown of Spartanburg, Daniel Morgan Avenue, married to a diehard Gamecock. 864-414-5271. Give Cindy a call. 864-414-5271. A proud sponsor of Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Family vacations, a new car, a new boat, all cost money, but you don't necessarily have to make more to afford any of that if you can save cash that's flying out the window now. iHelp Consulting can help you finally get the kids to Disney World, upgrade the minivan, or drop that new boat in the water next summer. Let Daniel and iHelp Consulting consult with you. No fees, just savings. You pay them a percentage of those savings. Save on essential services, credit card fees, you name it. Let them find it. These folks are incredible. iHelpConsulting.com. Um, how can I help you? Hey, Mo Calvert here from Carolina Gamecocks. You're listening to Inside the Gamecocks, the show with JC and Phil. Welcome in to the. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you reading this? Ar- this Arturo Freeman thing? Yes, I was reading I was like, DJ's I, comment. I, it just popped yeah, right I know Arturo, man. I'm like, oh, <laughs> wow. Is Arturo Here, let's there? put that up. <laughs> so, Arturo Freeman, if you're listening, man, I love you. But uh, VJ says, got a phone call at 3 a.m., foul 96, live to the roost. Is Arturo there? <laughs> Roommates and I got a good laugh. So I lived off campus at Carolina, man. Now, and VJ says true story. I believe you completely. Oh yeah, yeah. Every <laughs> believe <day>. me. <laughs> I've heard stories about the roost. Woo. But uh, <laughs> 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 I 
today's yeah. a, show is a cluster today, man. <laughs> no, no. On oh, my end. No, I see. I had this little elf hat on, and I'm like, I can't can't quit looking at it and thinking about that that Swedish horror movie. Uh, I'm the latest stone says Loggins is a hit on the recruiting trail. Yeah, I mean, look for a guy was in the NFL 20 years. Look at what he did in Arkansas recruiting. Look at what he's done here. I mean, the guy's. I don't know if he can call a single play at the college level, but he he can do it. So, um, three five stars sit behind a walk on starter at Georgia's quarterback position. Hey, how about that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it's all about no, talent, I mean, evaluation, and development. Regardless. You want five stars, right? You want the five stars, but you also don't want to sit there and go, "That's all." That, that's what defines great recruiting because it doesn't. Um, now, if you're like, you know, Alabama, Georgia, whoever, you know, uh, you're going to get so many five stars that some are going to pan out. But I mean, look, I, all right, so let's go to the team. Let's go to the team rankings, Peter. Okay. <laughs> So, so Georgia had the number two class in the country. By all accounts, elite class. A lot of great players. Two five-stars. Ohio State only signed one five-star in this class. LSU, sixth class, one. Tennessee, only one. Notre Dame, ninth-rated class, no five-stars. Uh, Clemson only signed one in this class. And, and you know, let's uh, – speaking of Georgia, I mean, I'll go through this and kind of just – let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I remember Fire Marshal Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You ever think Brent Venables kind of looks like Fire Marshal Bill? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That you know. Let Skeletor, me tell you something. Anything you know. Yeah. Skeletor. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Um. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's look at Georgia Bulldogs historic draft class last year. All right. So Trey jo- Trayvon Walker was the number one. Selection out of Georgia was a five star. Moved up late though, just like he kind of did in the draft. Uh, I think by the time Carolina, because Carolina was like second for him, Carolina was recruiting him. Um, he was like seventh in the country, something like that. Uh, but yeah, number one five star. Well, then the second pick they have is Jordan Davis, a three star offensive line prospect out of North Carolina that they moved to, to nose tackle. Quay Walker was next. He's a four-star. Devontae Wyatt was a low four-star. Lewis Seen was a four-star. Uh, uh, next round, George Pickens, there's a five. James Cook, four-star. Oh, N'Kobe Dean, who should have been higher, five. Channing Tindall, a four. Zamir White, five. Uh, a three, another three. Then a five. Then another five. I don't think Darian Kendrick was should have been a five, but he was. And then a four. And that's a historic draft class, and there's three stars sprinkled all in it. Um, So it's not always, you know, at the end, like a bunch of five stars that get drafted. They do, and they get drafted at a higher percentage, but then there's only 32 of them a year. Um, You know, the best school in the country about getting five stars drafted high is Alabama, and that's always been that. Um, and, and, but, but that tells you that it's not that Alabama's recruiting five stars it's that they're developing players <laughs> at the five-star <laughs> level. Um, and, and look, I think South Carolina does not have to have a five-star in every class to compete. I, I think that, um, uh, it's nice to have those types of guys, especially when they're no brainers. But, uh, as someone that's been kind of in the business, I'll tell you right now, it, it, there's some guys that are five stars that everybody wants to take a flyer on like industry wide. Well, he's not really that good now, but he will be. And then he's everybody agrees on right, all yeah. of a sudden he's a composite five star. And that guy is usually either a top three pick or a bust. <laughs> so that's the one thing there. Dowell Loggins looks like Patton Oswalt. Yeah, Robert, we know. Yep. Sure does. It's funny. Like all right, Saunders is something about like Lamar Monroe Freely. Monroe I don't think Monroe's a five star, is he? Grover's Venables reminds me of Ebb from Green Acres. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Quantrell has another thing. He says, JC, imagine Harbor and Smith making plays on offense and creating mismatches. And maybe you will trend towards thinking he will come to Carolina. Yeah. I don't know that Nick Harbor isn't a receiver. Like, not – like, if he's a tight end, I think he's like a Jared Cook guy. Uh, yeah, that wasn't that they don't ask to block a whole lot. Um, 
What's that? Call him touchdown. You know, unless he just has hands of stone, and then I don't know what you do with him. I mean, do you do you put him at like an, a freak outside linebacker type spot, or do, do maybe does he play safety? I don't know. Or, or, or I mean, put his hand down, but at two thirty, because I mean, he doesn't want to gain a bunch of weight because of track. Yeah. So. Uh, Craiger says TID barely plays either. We need him. And yeah, that's the thing too. When you think about the situation on the D line right now is, you know, say what you want about Will Muschamp. Had he not been on the hot seat and had been like a normal recruiting cycle, South Carolina gets Terry Ingram Dawkins and Justice Moon. Yeah. One's at Florida, one's at Georgia. Uh, so now you throw in Birch and Gilbert leaving that's four guys you should have coming back. So, um, but, but, you know, with, with those two, you're going to lose guys out of the state if, uh, if you're going through a coaching transition because there's all this uncertainty. Plus, COVID was going on. Yeah, it was just sort of weird. Um, JC, you're right. Fairling's only a four. Yeah, but he's number one in the state, which I didn't agree with, but whatever, you know. <laughs> uh, Grover said, me and George Rogers ruined Snowden and Bates West. Boy, Snowden was... Some of my friends live there. Whew, oh, uh, KFC says, can you imagine Harbor playing safety at 6'6"? Six, six? He'd be like Cam Chancellor. I think Torian Gray coached Cam Chancellor at Virginia Tech. Mm. Big old freak stepping up. Yeah, for sure. Just He'd be an interesting up, player so. on defense, but I don't know if that's – where his he'd have is. to get <laughs> he'd have to get up to about two fifty something to be a good rush end in this league. So I don't know. I, I, the more I think about it, if he if he if he wants to preserve track and not get you know not not gain too much weight for football, you can strength train and not necessarily gain. You can get strength but not weight. But you're gonna have to be a receiver, a wide receiver or something. I mean, because. You got to get bigger to play tight end and D end, you know. Now, I don't know that uh, Dowell Loggins is going to have the Marcus Satterfield approach and demand that you bl- say and say that you're not a tight end, and then demand that your blocking gets better at tight end to play. <laughs> Come to find out, G. Bell couldn't wasn't really all that uh, studious in the playbook anyway. So, um, Quantrill says, "Is Jared Cook still in the league?" Uh, I think so. I know why he was up until was last, last year. year. I don't know about this um, year. Let's see. I think he retired. KFC says, I feel like Israel's going to have a similar track. Look up and he has 10 years in the league. Yeah, the guy that gets me is Jonathan Joseph. He was like 14. Yeah. You know, I don't think people remembered like that first Spurrier team had a lot of personnel deficiencies. Um, I think that Beamer inherited a better situation top to bottom, player-wise, top to bottom, not at every spot, uh, than Muschamp or Spurrier did. But – and people wonder, like, how in the heck was that defense really good toward the end of the year, really competitive? Uh, they, had Dustin, they had the Lindsey boys out there playing and Chris Tucker at nose tackle and uh, Oris Lambert at defensive end and uh, – and the difference was, people forget, I think that secondary was Jonathan Joseph, Co. Simpson, and Fred Bennett. All went to the league. Uh, and Jonathan Joseph lasted as long as any of them. I remember him picking off a pass early in that Tennessee game up in Knoxville. It was like a thing of beauty. So, you know, that was the, that was the thing. Jonathan Joseph in the bowl game helped himself a lot. Yeah. A lot. So, Ryan says, I want to see Harbor and Loggins take a picture like Aaron Judge and L2D. Gosh, that'd be so, funny. Anyway, <laughs> he just says, uh, Harbor will be Megatron. All right, so we got a big announcement coming up tomorrow. Uh, so, we're going to get on out of here a little early today because we went over three minutes yesterday. We, we got to give you an exact amount of time every week, 10 hours every week. <laughs> That's right, 10 hours a week. Uh, We'll get paid. We have to, we'll have to pay each other overtime, if not. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we really appreciate you guys tuning in today. Uh, again, Michael Smith commits to the Gamecocks. 
four-star player. Carolina did move up to 11th in the country and for the 2024 uh, team rankings. We've got another announcement coming up Friday, Sir Wendell Gregory. Uh, yes. Linebacker from Marietta, Georgia. Uh, another uh, big-time Georgia kid. So that's it's good. I mean, these guys keep – I'm, I'm going to kind of put it together and uh, I guess uh, start looking at like three-year uh, – like a three-year Georgia run. I'm put that article together uh, after this week, assuming they get Gregory and kind of look at 22, 23, 24 in that state and break it down. Because my feeling is, uh, and I thought the Muschamp staff did a much better job than the Spurrier staff in that state uh, as far as going after the right guys. My feeling is Beamer's probably done even better on paper. So we'll see. All right. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Everybody should be excited. For Phil Mullinax, it's J.C. Sherbert. This has been Inside the Gamecocks, the show. Have a great Tuesday afternoon.